All right, so today we're just gonna um, go through following our kind of lectures on um, glucose, insulin, stuff like that. We're gonna move on to lipid metabolism and specifically the mode of transport of lipids, so triglycerides, through um, lipoproteins. So if we look at how this fatty acids and cholesterol are transported, so we've got the exogenous pathway, so the delivery of fatty acids and cholesterol from diet and the GI tract to tissue. The endogenous pathway delivers fatty acids and cholesterol from the liver to the tissues. And reverse pathway removal of cholesterol from tissue and other lipoproteins and delivery to the liver. So yeah, as you can see, liver is quite important in this pathway. So make sure to keep the liver healthy and uh, don't excess drink because your liver likes to be happy. What happens when we eat? So we eat these triglycerides, which are uh, which can be digested into fatty acids and glycerols, uh, as we know, because of that glycerol backbone. In that triglycerol state, they can be taken up by firstly a apolipoprotein. So these are kind of miniature versions, and they will have their special um, features with it, and they activate enzymes and pathways. So triglycerides get this um, APOB48 and are then um, transported in chylomicrons, firstly through the lymph system uh, and, then through, and then through the blood and then delivered to where they need to be. So the, this, uh, these are taken out by cells in the intestine, as you can see the villi there uh, across the center in the image, uh, and they're taken out by enterocytes into the body. Uh, differently, the fatty acids and glycerols, they can um, simply, because they are non-sterified fatty acids, they can easily be taken by uh, albumin uh, and into the blood and transported. So if we look at these pathways, uh, exogenous pathways, so here the HDLs, so these are high density lipoproteins that are circulating in the blood and uh, they gen they're generated in the liver. And what basically do they work in the reverse pathway, so we'll talk about that later. But they firstly give these uh, APOC2 and E to the chylomicrons and adipose and muscle tissue where lipoprotein lipase, this LPL enzyme, breaks down chylomicrons which are carrying the triglycerides into chylomicron remnants. HDL then um, take up this excess phospholipids which are in the chylomicrons and uh, any extra cholesterol and then the chylomicron remnants are removed by B slash E receptors on hepatocytes because in this exogenous pathway exogenous meaning outside from the body so these chylomicrons carry cholesterol back to the liver and drop it off and HDL basically pick up the remnants. So as you can see here, HDLs are very important in um, mediating your cholesterol levels in the body to avoid this atherosclerosis. So we've got this endogenous pathway now. In the liver, the free fatty acids can be then turned back into triglycerides through the process of esterification, as we talked about in the previous lectures. And these are then taken out by VL VLDLs, so very low density lipoproteins. And these take up the APOB100, C2 and E. And again, uh, this hydrolysis by lipoprotein lipase um, break them down into intermediate density lipoproteins. Again, the HDLs come along and take the excess, and these are now called low density lipoproteins. Um, the intermediate ones are removed from circulation via these BE receptors again, and LDLs are removed by receptors found on all cell types, but mostly those with high cholesterol. So in this endogenous pathway, we're delivering fatty acids to cells that need them for energy and storage. So what happens when this LDL gets to a cell? So um, LDLs, as we said, are rich in cholesterol and this APOB100, and they have a longer, li a longer life life than VLDL and IDL. And these are then taken up by receptors, as you can see in the, in the slide here, these blue things. So they'll be on the cell membrane as receptors. The orange are the receptors. And the blue things, they're called clathrin proteins, and they coordinate the LDL receptors inside the cells to be then, um, through kind of exocytosis, be presented on the, on the surface. So these LDLs then bind to the receptors, and they're internalized by endocytosis. And as we talked about, these fats can cause the acidity to um, increase, uh, as we talked about in diabetes. So the pH now changes to around 5 and the LDL broken, are broken down to cholesterol for the cell uh, as well as being broken down to some amino acids. And obviously we don't, know, we don't want this to increase too much because we don't want our, our, our cells to take up too much cholesterol uh, as this can be harmful. And basically we don't want to 
get too much weight obviously on us. So there's a negative feedback where we downregulate the production of this LDLs. Also suppression of de novo cholesterol. So de novo just means from scratch basically because our body can make cholesterol. So the synthesis of cholesterol from uh, HEMAGCOA. So the enzyme HEMAGCOA reductase is inhibited. And the activation of enzymes that esterify cholesterol uh, and promote storage as well. Yeah, note to take from that, we don't actually need to eat cholesterol from meat or eggs. We can, our body can synthesize it by itself quite easily. So as we talked about, most cells can make cholesterol from this acetyl-CoA, which we talked about before. And this is converted into this HEMAGCOA. COA and um, the enzyme HEMAGCOA reductase and it converts this molecule into mevalonic acid and this is the rate limiting step meaning um, the change in Gibbs energy is below zero uh, so the reaction is spontaneous and is one way and this means there's a good way and um, good place to regulate it and uh, so this is why this is where the down regulation uh, happens so we don't take up too much cholesterol uh, and also yeah when we take up cholesterol uh, this also inhibits the enzyme so if we talk about the reverse pathway so that basically means hdls come along and take up the excess fat so we start with this apoa1 uh, production in the liver and this is secreted with phospholipid to make this nascent so kind of new hdl and as they take up uh, these molecules and more fats they become discoidal in shape. So HDLs can pick up these excess molecules from either excess from cells or from the hydrolysis of this VLDL and the chylomicrons which we talked about in the endo endogenous and exogenous pathways. So when they're, those two are broken down they obviously release their remnants and HDLs just come along and pick them up. And cholesterol is esterified to long fatty acids um, by this lecithin cholesterol acyl transferase enzyme and this is activated by this special apo lipoprotein A1. So the roots of HDLs that they can then take to get the stuff back to the liver which and then the liver sorts things out. The HDL goes to the liver and cholesterol is depleted at this SRB1 receptor protein so that's the minor indirect route and the major basically just a longer pathway occurs when there are high levels of these triglycerides in the blood and HDLs are first converted into these cholesterol esters where they're broken down into chylomicrons remnants or IDLs and are taken up by these uh, again B slash E liver receptors. Also cholesterol arriving in the cell can be incorporated in these bile salts and excreted via the GI tract and our waste. And just a little note here on the lipoproteins and diabetes mellitus. So as we talked about, because there's, there isn't enough insulin, uh, we've got this hypertriglyceridemia, and this is um, this also seen by an increase in VLDL and chylomicrons, and this is due to the decrease of lipo -li lipoprotein lipase activity, which we talked about, and increase in hormone sensitive lipase, which basically breaks down triglycerides, and this is again due to this insufficient insulin. Also in type two there is seen to be a breakdown or catabolism of HDLs. So we talked about HDLs being kind of the good guys as they pick up the excess cholesterol and take it back to the liver. And in type 2 diabetes is seen uh, to be broken down. Also the glycation, so adding of glucose into proteins. So the glycation of this apolipoprotein B may enhance atherogenicity, so the increase in plaques in blood vessels that cause atherosclerosis so that happening may enhance the ability of LDL by reducing affinity for LDL receptors so yeah so basically this apolipoprotein B can't connect LDLs to their receptors on cells therefore the cholesterol isn't deposited in cells like it should be and instead it's left in the blood vessels where these plaques can be made uh, so yeah that's a little link there so yeah, thank you for watching and don't forget to check the uh, description for the books and their questions if you're interested in purchasing them. And yeah, thank you for watching and I'll like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you. Take care.